Hello, my name is Zachary Clark. I will be covering chemical dating with isotopes. Let's start with a little review of atoms. Quite trivially, we know protons, positively charged, neutrons, and no charge make up the nucleus, which is surrounded by an electron cloud, which is negatively charged, making the overall atom neutral. So, if we want to quantitatively analyze this, how would we do that? Well, what we look at is the mass number. The mass number is simply Z plus N, which is protons plus neutrons. So let's pick the first element of the periodic table, hydrogen, which has one proton, one electron. So for the mass number of hydrogen, one plus zero. Easy, right? What happens if we start adding neutrons in with the proton? Well, we started with protium, what we call hydrogen, with a mass number of one. We add, take that and add one neutron to get deuterium with a mass number two. And then to protium, we add two neutrons to get tritium, mass number three. So these are all the same element, but how can that be? Well, what we go to say is, is that this is protium, hydrogen is this commonly called, is the main one. So we say hydrogen has two isotopes, right, of deuterium and tritium. So what exactly is an isotope? Well, an isotope is atoms of an element with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. And this is characterized by its mass number that we just looked at. So, as we saw, each element comes in several different flavors. So, how do we determine the amount of each flavor? Well, chemists use the percent natural abundance which is the amount of each isotope found in nature. So if we look over here, we can see that carbon-12 appears in 98.9% of nature. Carbon-13 only shows in 1.1%. Carbon-14 over here shows in very small amounts, trace amounts, not even to be noticed for the most part. So let's take that and move forward to calculate the mass of each element, we use the average atomic mass, which is the weighted average of the isotopic masses. So all that means is that for the atomic mass, we take the fraction of each isotope, multiply that by its respectful mass, and that's how much each element weighs. So, Quickly, let's look at carbon again. Carbon-12 shows a 99%. Carbon-13, 1.1. And carbon-14, we're not even going to worry about in this case because it's so small. So we go down here to calculate the atomic mass and take carbon-12 times its abundance, carbon-13 times its abundance, and we get a mass of 12.011 which checks out onto the periodic table and any other literature that you check. So taking a step forward with isotopes, we noticed that we said that only the number of neutrons changes, which is good as electrons are the main factor in chemical reactions. So with Isotopes have the same chemical behavior, quite similar. But as we said, there's different amount of neutrons. This is going to give us different nuclear behavior. So that's inside the nucleus. Now that we looked at chemical reactions, nuclear reactions are going to involve an atom's nucleus. So that's the protons and neutrons that are different with different nuclei and get different stabilities. Some more stable than others, 
whereas the unstable ones we call radioactive. And what happens is for radioactivity is nuclei undergo a spontaneous decay and form some type of radiation. Now, in 1897, Ernst Rutherford was studying radioactivity, doing several different experiments, most well known for the gold foil experiment. But in this conclusion, there's three very distinct types of radiation. And since his day, we've been able to discover two new forms. So it gives us five overall, with alpha, beta, gamma, positron, and electron capture. To monitor the radioactivity, we use radioactive decay, which is proportional to the number of nuclei present. And radioactive decay is is rate equals k, which is constant, times n, number of nuclei present. So to monitor the, the rate at which samples decay, we use half-life, which is the time it takes for half the amount of a parent nuclei in a radioactive sample to decay into half the amount, which, is, which can be calculated as T1 half, as half-life T1 half equals 0 0.693 divided by K, which is our rate constant. So from this, we can interpret nuclei decay quicker So from this, we can say nucleides that decay quicker have a shorter half-life and larger rate constant. Life has many is very has several uses. is very applicable, such as in radiometric dating, which is the method of dating material based upon the decay of its constituent radioactive atoms. So first up, we get radiocarbon dating, which is the most common form as carbon is found in a lot in all organic matter and as it is in all organic matter. As all organic matter is composed of carbon. It has a range of less than fifty thousand years which is kind of unfortunate, but within the relative view of human existence, this is all right. And this, the way this is carried out is carbon-14 is going to decay into nitrogen via beta emission. So, carbon, so here we have carbon-14, a very trace amount that we saw before, decays into nitrogen and emits a beta proton, a beta particle. And carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,300 years. It's pretty good. So, yeah. Building more on radiometric dating, we can use it for another method, method called comparison which is comparison of isotope to isotope. It's a much more dependable it's a much more dependable method and it's a much more dependable method as it has a larger range as it has a larger range to work from as it can be dated back farther. And this is done with uranium-238 by checking, the way this is done is by checking the decay of one isotope against, into another element. 
is the, the way this is done is by measuring the decay of one isotope in comparison to something else it turns into. So we have uranium-238 that will decay into lead-206. So this is, this is very common in rocks and things. This is very common in volcanic rocks. This is a very common method. This is a very common method used mainly in volcanic rocks. And has a half-life of 4.47 times 10 to the ninth years. And you can see that it has an extremely large half-life, half-life. And can be also done with potassium-40 to argon-40, so which has a slightly lower half-life than uranium does. This is very applicable as it, it can be used in, to date back volcanic rocks, the date of the Earth, and even to date back solar system, the solar system by using this on asteroids. I hope this has been helpful and very informative. Thank you for viewing.